it's Eve the creative curator welcome back to my channel in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to draft a kimono sleeve or am I so a quick overview the kimono sleeve is inspired by the kimono which is a traditional Japanese garment I've got an article on my website that will talk you through the history of the kimono and also the step-by-step -step process for creating in the kimono sleeve pattern but technically it's not a kimono sleeve it's a kimono sleeve bodice combination because the kimono sleeve is actually an extension of the bodice so in today's video i'm going to show you how to draft that using an existing bodice block and if you have one a sleeve block but it's not necessary because there is another way in order to get the most from this tutorial you're going to want a few things the first thing is a bodice block pattern so that would be a front and back bodice preferably one that hasn't got too much ease but also isn't too close fitted i actually go with a close fit option just in case i want like a, a close fit kimono style but you are free to choose a pattern bodice pattern that's best suited for you if you have one a sleeve block front and back of course so one piece sleeve if you don't it's fine we'll just work a different method you'll also want pattern making paper so any kind of paper that is has some translucency to it so you can see the pattern that's underneath you'll want a standard pencil like a two or four h that's hard so you can make a nice clear line measuring tape because we like to measure things like the length of our arm because we're going to need that depending on the length of the sleeve we're going to be creating you'll also need a straight edge like a ruler or a pattern master i prefer a pattern master myself but you can use whichever tool that has a straight edge finally you're going to need paper scissors for cutting out we are in this video only drafting so gather those things together and we'll get started and then stay tuned later in the week i'll be sharing with you a video on actually sewing a kimono sleeve topped garment in order to get started as i mentioned before you're going to need a front bodice block a back bodice block and a sleeve block do not be alarmed by how long this block is for the sleeve a lot of people would look at this and be like oh my god that's in incredibly large but if you were to take so this is the back notch if you were to look at this and if you were to walk your pattern along you will see that my notches are about right and then i have a little bit of ease in the top technically i could have less but you know this is the side seam coming down to the waist and then if you were to continue it down you will see that it approximately finishes this is my hip line so about mid thigh so this is a perfectly normal length for a sleeve please do not be alarmed but that is what we're going to use so again we have the front the back bodice and the sleeve block too we are first of all going to start with the front now because i'm working with the front and my front sleeve is here i'm going to just move my front bodice piece along the piece of paper and i'm going to trace off what i have so far you can see that i've actually moved my dart i don't have a dart in the armhole area again if you have a dart in the shoulder i suggest moving it down into the waist that would be the easiest thing to do mark in any notches that you feel are relevant at this point and there we have one okay next up we are going to take our sleeve and we are going to match the shoulder point of our sleeve to the shoulder line here and this is our front notch and we want our front notch to be parallel this is where you're going to want a grading ruler or a pattern master just so that you can make sure it's kind of in line it's not essential but it's how i like to do it so i've got the center line of my ruler along my center front i have it in line with my front notch so i'm just going to pivot my sleeve until it hits that point which is here then what i'm going to do is mark and i'm going to draw around the rest of my sleeve so as you can see if you have a sleeve block already it's relatively easy i did mark those in and then we can just connect those lines here and this is like my base template okay obviously as you can see here we have the sleeve cutting into the bodice and the bodice cutting into the sleeve so you're going to end up with a situation that you're struggling to move which is when you want to put in a gusset but we're going to just use this as a template and then i'm going to show you how we would further out from this so this is like the very very basic i'm going to get a different color pen so you can see what i want to do is i want to raise my shoulder point okay so i've got my bodice i've got my sleeve but that's not what's going to happen i'm going to take my pen and i'm going to inline with my center front so and let me just pull a piece of paper because i've got stuff on my table blocking me i want to raise my shoulder point by 1.5 centimeters this is a half scale block so actually it's 0.75 centimeters so i'm keeping my center line on my center front because i know that it's a straight line and i'm getting to the point where it's about 0.75 above and i'm just going to mark it there okay can you see that that's 0.75 centimeters you can do as high as you want you can do less than that but i'm just raising mine up what i'm then going to do is 
I want this line to actually be quite straight. And there's a reason for that. So I'm placing my pattern mask on my original shoulder line and I'm lining up. Can you see? I'm going to do a dot and I'm going to do a dot. Marking my notch, do my hem. So this sleeve has some ease. You can see it says no ease line and this is my ease line. So if I wanted to be more fitted, I would do the dotted line. And then what you'll notice, if you're looking at the green line, let me join that line together. So we're looking at the green line now, is that actually my green line is barely touching my side seam. Okay, so I've got a lot more space in this area for my kimono sleeve. Now we're gonna change bands. And what I want is I want to connect my neckline to the 0.1.5 centimeters, or in this case, 0.75 centimeters. And I want it to come naturally down to this line. You can use your pattern master. For this, I actually prefer to use my very form French curve ruler. I'll leave it linked in the description. Uh, you can get it on places like Amazon. I love it. It's got a natural, you can of course freehand it, but I prefer to just use this tool because I think it's fabulous at helping me to get the right kind of curve line I want. And then I just want to curve it naturally. I'm going to use the reverse side so that it comes very nicely like this. Okay, so I've got a lovely, simple line. I, of course, have my line coming across. You would want to think about how wide you want your sleeve to be. Is it going to be a loose fit sleeve? Are you going to cinch it in with some elastic? Or are you going to add a placket and a cuff and a button? Are you going to add a zipper? There are different variations on what you can do. I'm going to leave it as is for now because I want to twirl it up for my mini dress form. I am going to square up from there. So I've got that 90 degree angle. And then I also need to consider where do I want? So if I, this is my waistline, okay? So if I come straight across, I'm effectively creating a bat wing sleeve block. I don't want a bat wing, I want a kimono. I don't want to go so high that actually I'm going to have to create a gusset as well. So I think I'm going to take this original crossover line here and I'm going to create a natural curve from that point that goes into the green line. And that will become my kimono sleeve shape. I'm going to use my very form ruler just to get a really nice curve. Mm. I say that, but I might actually just freehand it. Let me get a pencil. So what I probably want to do is take the distance between those two. So how far down is this? This is two centimeters, marking two centimeters. And then halfway between that is one centimeter, of course. So actually maybe what I'm going to do is create this. And maybe I go one centimeter up. I'm making this up as I go along, by the way. There we go. But I don't want it to be so high, do I? Or do I? No, I don't. I want it to be lower. Okay. See, sometimes a lot of the design process is actually just thinking it as you're going. And then you twirl it and you test it. And then you're like, mm, no, I don't like it like that, actually. So I'm going to come along here. So this is the waist. This is the bust. I want it to be... See? Doesn't that look lovely? Okay. So remember, we're using the red line as a source of that is my kimono sleeve shape of course the kimono is cut as one piece so none of this is here we're not creating like a raglan we're not cutting this open we have a simple kimono style sleeve in that it is it is extended onto from the bodice and that's what we're working with this dart is still very much relevant so this dart if it were to stay as is would provide a fitted bodice front it would be exceptionally fitted there would be like breathing ease but that is all for my dress form and she would have a kimono fit sleeve okay next up is to do it for the back so for the back bodice and sleeve kimono block we're going to take the back bodice section and much like we did with the front there isn't an awful lot of difference between the front and back of the sleeve as you can see this is the front we have more of a curve this is the back we have more of a slope so we're not going to worry so much about that what we do need to know is the waist section so i like to line up my waist the neck shoulder point because we need this line and this line to be basically the same for the front and back pieces. The rest doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do is make sure there's an overlap. So for this one, I'm actually going to use a blue pen and I'm just going to cross. I'm going to mark over 
the back bodice. Again, if you had a dart within the back shoulder area, I would recommend that you pivot it into the armhole first or elsewhere. The armhole's fine because there's only a minimal amount of ease normally. We're gonna write here CB and this is CF. And then essentially this would be cut on the center back will be cut on the straight grain. And that's my extension with the red. And the center front will be cut on the straight grain. And that is the same piece. So when they're joined together, darts put in, it will be perfectly fitted, like barely any wearing ease in the bodice section, but the sleeve will be draped like a kimono. I'm gonna twirl this up so you can see what it looks like. Okay, so the twirl is sewn. I have not, as I already said, sewn the darts. I've left the marks for the darts, but I wanted to show you what this looks like with the darts unsewn on the dress form first. So I'm gonna show you that now. Okay, you're gonna have to excuse the wobbling hands. I don't have my gimbal powered up. So this is the center back, as you can see. The darts have not been added, so there is a looseness here. The center front, the center back fold, sorry, has a one centimeter seam allowance, so I've pinned that in place, and it's a kind of like nice loosely fit. You can see the kimono sleeve coming out at an angle, so if there was an arm in this, you can see how it would behave differently. It wouldn't stick out right the way that it is here. Um, the front obviously has issues because I haven't put those darts in that are originally there. I haven't moved them around the body. I could have moved them into the side seam. Could have moved them into a different place to suppress the fabric. I haven't even sewn these in at the moment. So at the moment, for now, we have all this extra fabric, which is fine if we were going to keep it that way. We would have modified the side seam placement because you can see that the side seam is sitting a bit skew with this where it would need to be. I can't do this one handed, it's so cool. So that would knock on to the side seam placement, which is shifting around. With the darts in place, you can see that I have pinned them. No, I haven't pinned them. I was going to pin them and I haven't. Let me do that now. So as you can see, I have now pinned in the front waist darts and back waist darts. I haven't gone all the way. You can see, however, that that does realign the side seam with where it should be. You'll notice that with a fitted style like this, the kimono effect for the sleeve, it will limit the amount of movement. Can you see? If you look at that as a triangle going up, I don't know if you can see that, but if you look at it as it is a triangle going up to the underarm and down, this is going to prevent the curve. It's going to prevent the sleeve from the arm from moving upwards. Can you see that? So ideally you would want to create it in a less fitted shape so you wouldn't have such extreme darting. This is like total fitted. This is like, you can breathe in it, but you can't really move in it. So you would need to add your wearing ease. You would also add more design ease in the front and the back to give you more movement, or you would have to insert a gusset. Um, so pattern cut a gusset shape for this area so that you also have more maneuverability. But that is a basic kimono style bodice block for my Hilda. Obviously you can create it with more ease in it. I have just done it based upon my proper block so that I could show you what this looks like. If you did it in a drapey fabric, it would drape more. I do have some of this kind of chiffony that I was also going to cut and sew, but it's too hot to sew this as well. So for now, that is your example and I might add to it in the future. Obviously not in video form, but I will add it to the website article in the future when it's a bit cooler for sewing. So as I said in the summary there, it is a great way to create a basic kimono style block so if you if there are any garments that you might want to make that has a kind of like grown on kimono style sleeve such as this um, it's a great block to just create for yourself so if i wanted to i could of course cut this much smaller and have just a, a simple fitted top with an open kimono style grown on sleeve like once you've created a block there's so many things you could do i could take out the darting and i could have it like down to knee length and have a kind of like a kimono tunic inspired dress there's so many variations the key is to create your blocks first which is why we started with the close fit block for my hilde and then i've developed it to have that kimono sleeve the next thing if i want it to i mean the reason I keep these things close fit is because I can always add ease later. I've got a great article on the difference between ease, wearing ease, pattern ease, fit and ease, design ease, all that kind of thing in my on my website. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. But that will help explain to you the different kinds of ease and why we have different blocks for different things. Like you have a close fit block, an easy fit block, a jacket block, 
a kimono block or the kind of blocks that you might need if you're going to develop a pattern or a design for yourself or somebody else. So this is a great tutorial to follow to get your kimono block. Let me know how you found it in the comments below. Give the video a like. It's the easiest way to support me. Subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more about pattern making, fashion design, garment construction, fashion fashion design did I say that already I am going to be working on a series of pattern drafting tutorials coming here to YouTube so stay tuned for those but in my next video I'm going to be showing you how I took this basic block so you've seen it on the half size um, for my heel to dress form but I'm going to be taking it and actually developing it for full size me and creating a little kimono sleeve style top but you'll have to wait until the next video to see exactly what I turn up with so thank you so much again for watching I hope you enjoyed it give the video a like subscribe if you want to see more from me and I will see you in the next one very shortly bye